Hey guys, Supercar Street Racing and Brad here once again with an exciting product today from Amazon. We have a Fire TV Cube sitting right here in front of me to add to our home theater room, which we are in right now. You can see this behind me is the home theater couch. And today we're gonna get this thing unboxed and take a look at what's inside. I've not owned one of these before, but I'm excited to make this the number one media outlet center in my home theater room. So this is going to do everything for me for my brand new Marantz Cinema 50 receiver. Let's get this thing open today on Supercar Street Racing. Thank you for joining and like and subscribe if you're new. Guys, Supercar Street Racing back once again, and we have something very special to show you today, and that is the Amazon Fire TV Cube. Now, I've been interested in this for a while now, and I finally went ahead and bit the bullet when I got my new Marantz Cinema 50 receiver. This guy right here is going to be the heart of my new home theater system, and this is gonna provide all of the good video inputs and apps that I need to go ahead and watch on the Cinema 50 in my Dolby Atmos home theater room. Now you can see right in front of me, right below this Tesla is the Fire TV Cube. Let's go ahead and take a look at the outside of the box first. All right, so taking a look at the box, on the front it does say Fire TV Cube. It says 4K HDR and it does support Wi-Fi 6. That is a new thing for the new Fire TV Cube, which has an improved processor as well. It does support Wi-Fi 6E for faster Wi-Fi transfers. Moving to the front of the box, around the top here, it shows some of the apps that you can use for entertainment purposes. Things like Netflix, HBO, Max, Freebie, Hulu, YouTube, Disney, and a few other more like Apple TV. That is all sitting on the front of the box. Now moving to the side of the box right here, you can see that it says it works hands-free with your smart home system from Amazon. It has Wi-Fi 6 tri-band, 4K Ultra HD, high dynamic range, Dolby Vision with Atmos and a octa-core processor which is also new. It is the fastest processor available in an Amazon smart device. Now the other side of the box is pretty simple. It shows you some more streaming service right here. It tells you what is included in the box. You do get the Fire TV Cube. You get a Fire TV voice remote, you get uh, AAA batteries, and you do get a power adapter. What you need in order to actually use this though, is you need a high-speed internet connection, you need an HDTV or 4K HDTV with HDMI inputs, and you do need a high-speed HDMI cable. And that's a look at the outside of the box on the Fire TV Cube. The next thing we need to do here is go ahead and unbox this thing and see what is inside the actual box. Hey guys, Brad back once again in front of the Fire TV Cube. And now it is time to do the meat and potatoes of this channel. We need to go ahead and get this guy unboxed right now. So let's go ahead and do it. Now I did cheat a little bit and already removed something from the packaging. So I am actually doing this. I already removed the seal from the bottom. Looks like you just flip that up and it does open just like that, if you guys can see that. And the first thing I see inside of the box is a brown cardboard thing, and it looks like inside of this is our power adapter. It is our power adapter, and it is not a USB Type-C adapter. It has the round plug like the other devices do. Now this might be to keep you from getting confused and accidentally plugging in the wrong thing to this because you do need a higher powered plug for this guy here. Now let's get the peel sat. Oh, it failed. Okay, that was harder peel side. It was kind of stuck on there. All peeled, ready to go. There is our power brick. And notice the end is one of those round type ones like are on all the show devices. And deeper inside the box here, there is a empty box, literally a box of nothing. And that is planned because it was just keeping everything close together inside of this box. We don't need this where we're going. And then in the back of this box here, we do have a nice manual here. It says hello on it. And inside the manual here, it kind of just shows you what the connections are all for, what all the buttons do, how to position your Fire TV Cube, etc. And we will go over that once we get everything out and hooked up to the theater system. 
All right, now it's time to go ahead and get the Fire TV Cube out of the box itself. There is the Fire TV Cube there. And then right below it, we do have a set of AAA batteries. And then right below that, we do see the Fire remote control here looking so fresh, brand new with that peel set. Not very good set. Boy, these are way harder to open now. There's our remote control. Let's go ahead and put the batteries in it while we have a chance. You just push forward and slide that right off. And then they do go with plus facing the top of the remote. And we now have our remote control ready to go. And we are done with this box. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. We don't need that where we're going either. And now let's go ahead and peel sat the Fire TV cube. Here is the Fire TV Cube right in front of me now. And you can see on the top, it does have four buttons there. The rest of it is just black. And then on the back, there is an HDMI in and an HDMI out. We'll have to explore what that in does later. We are down here with the brand new Marantz Cinema 50, where we are going to be connecting our brand new Fire TV Cube. And I think for now, a good place for it to sit will just be right next to this because we ordered a new shelf and it has not arrived yet. Now the Cinema 50 has plenty of inputs for this. We're gonna go ahead and put it into the media player port using an HDMI cable that is compatible with 4K. All right, we are behind the Marantz Cinema 50 right now, and you can see all the inputs right there. All we have to do is just find the one for media player and go ahead and plug in our HDMI cable there. We do have our HDMI cable right here. Let's go ahead and see if we can find the correct input here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and plug our HDMI cable into the, we're gonna use the cable sat. It's the first input all the way over here and we are plugged in and ready to go right there. The other side of this will be our Fire TV Cube. So let's go ahead and grab that. There's our cube right there. Put that down there for now. And we need our power brick. Let's go ahead and supply power. And there is a power connector right on the back of this guy. Is right there. See if it lights up. And there goes the light bar around the top. It did make the boot up sound. And I think we need to do the rest from the Alexa app. All right, we need to go ahead and plug in our HDMI cable also to the back of our Fire TV here. Remember there is an in and an out, so don't get them confused. Here is the output right there. Notice it does not have a headphone jack either. If you were hoping to have audio out of this, forget it. They've started deleting those from everything. All right, it wanted us to turn on our projector. So here is our projector and we now have to use our receiver instead of the projector. So let's go ahead to the receiver input. So basically we're changing our input on our projector to the Cinema 50. The Cinema 50 is now on and there is the it automatically went to that uh, input, which is interesting. And now it wants me to hold down the home key for 10 seconds. There it goes. Now to press the play button to start, we are in English. It already knew my Wi-Fi because I put it in when I bought the Fire TV Cube. Now it is updating to the latest software and now it is going to restart. It might have to do that several times in order to work properly. And there is the resolution 3840 by 2160 is what it's supposed to be. We may have to go change some settings inside of the cube to optimize the display and the sound, but it is now updating the device. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about setting up the audio. We're gonna go ahead and go to the gear this is if you have a home theater system. You're gonna to go to display and sounds. You wanna make sure CEC device control is on. Go to audio. Surround sound is set to advanced, best, or best available. If that doesn't work, you can change it to Dolby Digital Plus or PCM. 
advanced audio, there is a volume leveler and a dialogue enhancer present in here if you wanna use those. And then you can use this if you have audio sync problems. I'm gonna see if it does, does actually do Atmos now. You, you guys can't watch this because it's copyrighted, but I'll blur the screen out. Okay, we have loaded up a movie. We will have to blur this out so we don't get a copyright strike, but we went ahead and opened up our Marantz app. And you can see right here on the app, it does say that we are in Dolby Atmos. So we are doing Atmos now with the new Fire TV Cube. It is working perfectly. Okay, looking at the top of the Fire TV Cube, this is the action button here. And then these are the microphones on top. There is four of them up on top of there. And this is the do not, this is like the mute button. Yeah, this is the microphone on off button. It's a circle with a slash through it. Then there's a whole layout here of what your remote does. It's pretty self-explanatory because I'm sure most of you have already used this device. All right, guys, that was a good look at the Fire TV Cube with Brad and Supercar Street Racing. I hope that you'll go down to the link in the description and order your own. Make sure you do use all my affiliate links because that helps us out greatly on the channel. We lose money, we don't get any money from this, and we just need to pay a few bills off with the revenue from Amazon. All right, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install Kodi on any Android Fire device. So what you wanna do is first go find this program called Downloader. It popped up right there, go ahead and install, and it is installing Downloader. Okay, Downloader's ready. All you have to do now is click Open, click Allow, click OK, go into the Enter a URL. It works like a mouse, you just move your cursor, and you type in the short code 35625. 356. Two, five. I quickly wanted to drop this in here because I forgot. In order to get the developer options, you can see on the screen what you do. You just go to the settings, you go to My Fire TV and to About, and then you hit the Select button seven times. Then your developer options mode will appear for you. Now you will want the 32-bit version in most cases. It says ARM 32-bit it's gonna ask you to install from unknown sources. It's gonna deny it. So we need to go back into our settings gear. We go to My Fire TV, developer options, install unknown apps on for downloader. Go back to the home screen, find downloader, get the ARM 32-bit version. It is staging it. I'm gonna click, you gotta push the down on the pad and go to install in the lower right. And it is installing now. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to put the crew on Kodi. Go ahead and launch Kodi and give it permissions. Go up to the top gear icon, hit that. Go to system, add-ons, turn on unknown sources and say yes. Now, if you are doing a home theater system, go to audio, but you wanna be at advanced. So you go to the very bottom and go to expert or advanced, go to audio and notice here, it's only set for two channels. So you have to move this to however many channels you have and we have 7.1. You'll also need to enable pass-through to do true Dolby Atmos and Dolby Digital. We're gonna enable all these. We have all this stuff available in our receiver. We have all these technologies available. Go back button. Let's go very to the very front so we show you again. Hit the gear icon now, go to file manager, Click on none, HTTPS. Click OK. You can go down there. If it doesn't name it for you, you can go down and enter name for it. Let's just put crew. Go back to OK. Go down to OK here. Click OK. And we have just added our source to get the zip file to install the crew. So let's back out. Let's go to add-ons. Let's go to install from zip file. The repository is a zip file. You pick the crew that we just created. There's the repository. You click on that. Now it is installing the crew. Repository, not the actual app. Now that we have the repository, you click install from repository. You pick the crew repository. Then you click video add-ons. There are a bunch, but we want the crew for now. So just click it 
and then lower right is already on install. It wants dependencies to be installed. You click OK, and there it goes. It is installing the crew. 7% and it is still counting. All right, guys, we are here in front of the SCSR editing rig inside today. Just wanted to quickly leave you guys with this one thought. I did enjoy setting up the Fire TV Cube for you guys, but I want to make one point about this box that maybe you might not know. The one, one thing that I don't like about this box is, there's two actually, one is, the ethernet port is only 100 megabits. It's not a gig. So that's a huge problem for a lot of people. If you don't have 6E, you may have some issues with uh, you know, high bit rate 4K movies over Wi-Fi. So no gig ethernet port, which is insane. It actually should have a 2.5 gig port in my opinion, at the very least. Also, the USB port on the back is only USB-A. So if you were thinking of getting a gig Ethernet adapter, you will be limited to the speed of USB-A on the back of the Fire Cube. But go ahead and get one of these at your leisure. Pick up one, like and subscribe, and make sure you click through the link in my description to buy this Fire TV Cube. And we will see you guys on the next video. Thank you so much for joining us.